Hello there. It's me, Martin. I'm working on Westmark Legacy, doing some art. Well, um, so what I'm doing here is basically just cleaning up my uh, early sketch. I colorized the line work and then uh, basically just clean it up a little bit so it's easier to deal with. Yeah, scaling it up, putting in some color on top of the, the line work so it doesn't look so flat. I usually do gradients quite a lot on these things. Um, and then I just create a new layer to fill in the whole character or the shape. So after the, the, the fill is done, I add a gradient on top and play around with the colors and then add another effect to give it a little bit more depth. These things are very helpful to kind of get an initial look and a shape of the, of the character or the thing you're drawing just to get something on paper. Oh yeah, and don't forget to save. Then on top of that, I'm going to add like solid black lines to um, highlight edges and other like outside corners and stuff. And this is kind of what makes it pop. It's what gives it the comic book feel as well. Uh, it's a stylized choice I've done because uh, I'm a big comic book geek. So I love doing these kinds of things. Video has been sped up to two hundred percent, so it's a bit quicker than I. I don't draw like this quick normally. But since uh, it's gonna be uploaded, I don't want the video to be too long. Yeah, just filling in all those gaps where it, where. I feel it's necessary to define the shape and enhance the, the edge. Sometimes I, I doodle so harshly on my sketchbook that I only see what, what it's gonna be till I actually have it on uh, in here. Uh, Sometimes the, the sketch is so rough that it's kind of not really the same as the result. But that's fine. That's what it's for. It's mostly just a guide. Like you see the chin here. I chop it a little bit because it's a bit too long. Mm -hmm. 
and then there's some weird lines in his chin so or cheek I am have to clean that up and this is mostly just defining what what character he is and adding the details that aren't necessary Like when you zoom out like that, you you have a better grasp of what you're doing. And here, for example, I gave him a little bit more of a belly because uh, the initial sketch was a bit was a bit thinner. Um, and like some stuff I forgot, like the buttons on his shirt weren't there, so I just drew them there now. Uh, a lot of stuff are like just fix what's what's there and make it work. And as soon as you define these lines, you get a little better grasp of what what he he's gonna look like. I've spent several months just experimenting with different methods and how I wanted to look to be like because uh, it started off very realistic and I felt that it would take way too long to make a now we have 15 characters will probably be more I don't know uh, doing those would take way too long so I had to kind of make an efficient plan on how how to go about making characters and sceneries and all that stuff. Everything has to have the same style, so. And uh, I noticed that comic books, yeah. yeah. They have a nice style and also they are very efficient with their time. So I stole some methods from there. Now I'm just painting in some shadow work, like all the harshest parts. Yeah, like you see here, I painted some shadow and then kind of regret doing that because I think like, oh yeah, I'm going to paint shadows afterwards anyway. So it's like, it's only the harshest stuff that remains. Th those with deep shadows. It was basically like inside his uh, shawl and where his tooth is missing and stuff like that. Yeah, hair, always a pain. Some etching. I, I try to add etching wherever I can just to make it look more alive. Because what I want is to make the thing look lived in. Like everything should feel alive. Uh, and if you make it too clean, it just gonna look dead in my eyes. A lot of artists manage this very well. I'm not one of those. I, I like doing messy stuff, so <laughs> I'm a messy artist. Um, yeah, and I noticed the, like the, the piece behind him is uh, it's not necessary, so I'm just gonna remove that, clean it up. It looks way better now. It's a nice silhouette with the hat and all that stuff. So uh, I'm going to start coloring him, giving his face some kind of a pinkish hue. And the key to having a face that looks decent or at least alive is to uh, hit it with cool and warm colors try to mix it up usually a human has like a gradient on their face like you're paler on your chin than you're on your forehead for example uh, it's not a big difference but there's always like this slight very 
tiny like, change. And then usually we humans are rosier on the cheeks when it's cold outside and he's like basically outside quite a lot. So, and also he's a drunk. So you usually get a little bit more colorish in your features. So uh, he's gonna be a little bit red and blushing. And then I do another layer for uh, shadowing, so you get the depth. So as soon as you put in some shadow work, it, he comes alive, and I love this part. It just makes me wanna, like, oh, yes. I'm giving the hat a little bit of depth. Not too much, because we're gonna work on that later anyway. And then now I like, I, I isolated the whole like bottom section that I, filled in to use as a mask so I don't paint outside the lines. Just giving the the dude some some nice warm colors to make him feel alive. Then when I'm done with the face I usually tend to just put some basic colors on the clothes and some shadows on the rest and after that, some highlights. And always I'm keeping in mind that this will probably change color-wise once I, I put in the initial colors for the hair, the face, the body, and all that stuff. And later I'm gonna do like a little bit of layer tampering with colors and uh, gradients to make him feel more like in his element, so to speak. And then of course adding some highlights and rim lights and stuff like that to make him pop a little bit more. Everything must pop because otherwise it'll just feel very flat. I'm okay with flat, it's just the style we're after is, it needs more panace. Also, if you're, if you have a keen eye, you can see that I'm really lazy with naming my layers uh, mostly because I know I'm gonna merge most of it so it's not really necessary and I know what I'm doing usually and these things you take like two hours three hours to do so uh, once I'm done I'm done I uh, if I want to change anything I just go in and repaint it no need for layers usually Yeah, I, I was just playing around and noticed that yeah, that's not going to work. It's like a, it's a strange shape. So I'm trying to fill it in so it doesn't feel too awkward with that blob of a shadow. But I'm probably going to remove it anyway because it looks strange. It's funny, I haven't really been drawing like finished pieces uh, before this project, not in this sense. Uh, I've done a lot of 3D work and UI work, but yeah, like I fell for the style and really like painting it and painting this way, I should say. Yeah, some nice colors to make him separate from the clothing and shawl and the... later I'm going to fix the hat as well. Yeah, time some for some highlights. I'm uh, adding some, some 
hot spots on his nose, his cheek, his lips. Like yes, if someone had a spotlight turn on on his uh, face, a little bit from upper left, upper right, um, shining down on him. So that way we can make him feel a little bit more three D instead of just a flat face. I always start with the face and then go back, go further off with like the hat and the rest because the face is like the first thing you're gonna notice. And uh, our eyes are basically trained for recognizing faces and stuff like that. So if anything looks weird, uh, we'll we'll see it. Yeah, fix the teeth as well. Giving the hair some highlights. I got frustrated because the color was wrong. It's starting to take shape. Starting to highlight a little bit on his clothes. Just gonna bring it out a little bit. It's all about the like warm and cool colors, just to say if everything falls together. It's like complementing each other, like going cool on the one side and the opposite side it goes more towards the warm. That usually helps to make it pop. There we go, the hat gets some, some love. I'm trying to imagine like where he's standing, like is he against some moonlight or is he like inside with some candlelight or anything else? Well, I decided later that he's basically outside, uh, so we need to kind of emphasize the, the colors for that. Some cracked lips. Now I'm just fiddling around with details. And adding some shadows where they're missing. Cleaning up some, some line work that I, I messed up. And we're starting to play around with the colors. Doing some final adjustments on like hue. As you can see, I merged everything and I'm just adding gradients and colorization on top of that. And this is how it looks. Doing, doing some contrasts. Mm. 
said I didn't like the black stuff down there, so just repainted it. Minor cleanup work. Painting the buttons. And now we're gonna fix the, the hat. I just felt it was a bit strange. It, it took too much attention, so I'm, I dulled it down and getting it darker. So now his face gets more of an attention instead of the hat. Now it needs to pop again, so I added some highlights. It's all about the subtleties. Uh, don't want to push it too hard and give it too much. Because once you hit the contrast and do a little color correction, everything is, it will be more visible than when you see it now so usually you work quite subtly and then add the oomph at the last step like this adds so much to the face Just adding the small highlights here and there now this is basically a rim light but I'm Extending it a little bit. I'm imagining where the light would be, like situated. If I would place a spotlight right behind him, how it would interact with everything on him. Then just do that as a layer. Some color correction on the base layer just to. I felt it was a bit too bright. Like looking at this, uh, he looks very dirty, and that's kind of what I was after. And uh, making his uh, right side pop was quite important to make him feel 3D. Small touches, it's all you need. Now another gradient, <laughs> my favorite stuff. 
just add ingredients. Just softening him up a little bit and adding the cool colors because he's outside. And you see how, how small touches will make him so much richer in the variety of colors. There you go. Brightening up the, the line art, the, the dark ones, a little bit so it's not like total black. Mm, that's it. That's our driver. Thank you for watching me draw for, I don't know how many minutes, but uh, I was having fun. I hope you learned something or enjoyed it at least. Uh, don't forget to wishlist and follow us on Twitter or Facebook. And uh, thank you and see you next time.